Okay, in this video, we're going to cover working with Sublime Text 2. So, if you return back to your browser and go ahead and type in Sublime Text 2 into a search engine, should be the uh, top result. If you go ahead and click, you'll notice that the URL Sublime Text 2, uh, sublimetext.com slash 2, um, at the very top, you have the option to download, and it, again, also has Windows, Linux, and OS X uh, flavors. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click to download uh, the installer, which I've already done. I have already installed. Um, again, if I were to run Sublime Text 2, you will notice that it is a, um, it's a text editor, uh, just like the processing IDE is. Um, but it has some, some interesting advantages. Uh, if I write, if I start to write some of the same code uh, just as I had done before in the previous video, you'll notice that if I go ahead and type uh, void, and if I go ahead and type uh, setup, and I do open paren, you'll notice that it automatically generates the close paren. And if I go ahead and type open bracket, you'll notice that it, go, it, 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 it completes it by doing the closing bracket. If I were to do a hard return, <clears throat> it puts that closing bracket on the third line and automatically tabs my second line. So it, it has ways of making writing code um, uh, much more uh, efficient, in my opinion. Now, and again, this is just a text editor. And I can do things like uh, make the type bigger for the case of these videos so that you can actually see the code that I'm writing. Um, so it's, it's got these uh, enhancements that I just think are a little bit um, a little bit more efficient. Now, if you go into the bottom right hand corner, you will notice that these are all the different uh, language packages that come with Sublime Text 2. And you might notice that processing is not part of this this base install. It's something that we have to add, okay? So if you come down to the P's where processing should be, it's PHP to Python, uh, but there's no, there's no processing, okay? Now, it ends up that there is a processing bundle. So we need to um, let Sublime Text 2 know that processing exists, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and return back to my browser, and I'm gonna go ahead and type in Sublime uh, Text 2 processing bundle. Okay, and when you do that, you're interested in the top two links. Um, this is the GitHub repository that, that hosts the package, and <clears throat> there's this great second link that actually has a video uh, on Vimeo for you to digest the content. Ice tea! So I'm going to go ahead and open up this uh, Sublime Text 2. Uh, Vimeo video. It's about a minute long. Um, again, it's it's uh, it's it's super helpful uh, in showing you how you can tie Sublime Text to um, uh, to processing. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and click uh, this top link because obviously I have already watched the video. Um, and here is where you can get um, all of the information that you need in order to add. Uh, processing to um, Sublime Text 2. Now, I am going to do it uh, using um, package control. Okay. Now, in order to use package control, you'll see here that uh, we want to look under uh, installation, and uh, the first one is is using Sublime package control. Okay. Now, if you go ahead and click this link, if you are using Sublime Package Control, you can easily install the processing bundle via, and then it shows you the steps. Unfortunately, by default, Package Control is not installed. So um, if you come under uh, Preferences, um, Package Control is, is actually is not here. Okay. So I'm going to click this link. Uh, if you're using Sublime Package Control. Okay. Uh, the Sublime Text Package Manager that makes it exceedingly simple to uh, install now. Okay. So when you click Install Now, 
you'll notice that there's some code that you have to copy and paste into Sublime Text 2's uh, console. Okay. Now, Sublime Text 3 is actually in beta, so you'll see some, some information here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click this link for Sublime Text 2. Now, you're going to copy this, uh, this one long string of instructions. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And I'm going to come back to Sublime Text, and I want to uh, open up the console. So if you go ahead and click uh, View, you'll see right here it says Show Console. Now, when you say show console, it's going to load that bottom section of Sublime Text 2. And right down here, there's an input, cursor's blinking. All I'm going to do is actually paste what we just copied uh, from the browser. So I go ahead and paste that, and I go ahead and click uh, return. And you'll notice that a bunch of stuff happened. And then it just said, please restart Sublime Text 2 to finish installation. So uh, the instructions for adding package control has now been added to Sublime Text 2. So it's at this point that I can close the package control installation instructions. I need to quit uh, Sublime Text 2 and actually restart it. So. When I restart Sublime Text 2, it'll seem like nothing is different, but actually if you come into uh, the main menu here, um, Sublime Text 2, if you come into Preferences, you will now notice down at the bottom is uh, Package Control, where Package Control previously was not there. Now, if I click Package Control, it's going to give me this little sub menu up at the top uh, with things that I want to do with packages. Do I want to add packages, delete packages, so on and so forth. So what we want to do is actually install a package. We want to install the processing package. So I'm going to go ahead and click install package. And you'll notice that a list of uh, packages has come up. Um, all I have to do is start to type in processing, and you'll notice it's uh, the top result. So it says, processing a Sublime Text 2 package for the programming language processing. So I'm going to go ahead and click that, and notice down here at the very, very bottom, it says package processing, you know, successfully uh, installed. Now, what that means is, is, is that uh, not only is the processing package uh, installed, but I can now click the bottom right hand menu and you'll notice that processing has now come up as a um, uh, language in the language selection list. So I'm going to go ahead and click processing and I'm going to start to get things like color coding and, uh, and, and all of that. Okay, so that's super fun, but it even does some some other stuff. You might notice that when I first wrote this code, I typed void, I typed setup, shaving minutes off my life, man. Um, I, I want to do things quicker. So what the bundle does is packages a lot of processing's features into shortcuts. So for example, I can actually delete all of this code and let's say that I want to do um, setup. All you have to do is type set and you'll now notice that um, it gives us a list of um, actions that we can call. So uh, I want to go ahead and do setup. I go ahead and hit enter and you'll notice it spits out my void setup function, my void draw function, uh, so I don't have to keep retyping that code anymore. I actually can use that shortcut um, to do stuff. So again, uh, let's say I wanted to do a for loop. You can go ahead and say for. Again, you'll notice that it, it, it pulls up the submenu. I can go ahead and click enter. It automatically spits out the uh, structure for a for loop, and it does tab highlighting. So you'll notice it says integer i equals zero. That's fine. If I go ahead and click uh, the tab, you'll notice it, it moves on to the zero. 
Uh, if I press tab again, I could uh, type in 100. If you press tab again, it puts you uh, in the uh, middle of the, the for loop. So this idea of not only executing shortcuts, but being able to tab through those shortcuts is super helpful. So um, I want to make a rectangle. And you go ahead and click Enter. Hey, where do you want it on the X axis? Oh, from before, 20 on the X, tab, 20 on the Y, tab, 50 for width, tab, 50 for height. So Sublime Text 2 makes it super easy um, to write code um, um, just quicker, easier, more, it's pretty. <laughs> it's a game changer. Okay, so we've got um, processing installed. We've got Sublime Text 2 installed. Um, there's only a couple more things uh, that I would say that we need to do. Um, one of the last things is, is that we're actually going to write code in Sublime Text 2, but when we click Build, we need to create this bridge between processing the application and Sublime Text 2. So, what the, the last thing that I need to do is actually launch processing again. And you'll notice under Tools, there's Install Processing Java. You need to do this. In other words, you can write all the code you want all day long in Sublime Text 2, and nothing is going to happen because uh, you haven't actually installed Processing Java yet. So I'm going to go ahead and click Install Processing Java. It's going to say, do you want to install it for all users, blah, blah, blah. You may need a password. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click Yes. I'm going to go ahead and put in my password. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And that now has successfully installed uh, Processing uh, Java into my environment. So at this point, I actually can quit processing again, okay? Because now I've installed processing Java. So if I close, um, if I close this uh, this window, and if I close this window, and if I close this window, and let's go ahead and save this file. Um, uh, another thing that I would say that's kind of nice about processing the IDE is that when you actually uh, click Save File, it would create a folder and then put your file inside of that folder. In fact, that's how processing works. Processing has to have a, uh, a sketch saved into a folder with the same exact name. So if, you're, um, if your sketch is called uh, joshuadavis.pde, then your folder needs to be called joshuadavis. In other words, you'll get uh, compile errors. Sublime Text 2 doesn't know how to do that yet. It knows that it can save this file, but it doesn't know to create the folder first. So that's one, I would say, mild uh, annoyance with working with Sublime Text 2. So let's go ahead and create a new folder on my desktop. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and call this folder, um, let's say it's called Test 1, right? And now this is typically what I do is I will open up test one and I will create a new folder uh, called build, okay? And um, I will then take this code that I've written. Uh, in this case, I, you know, I don't want this, this for loop. Um, this, uh, this rectangle is fine. We're not gonna cover draw just yet. Um, in our original file, we had it with a fill of orange. So, and I'm going to go ahead and save this now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and save this on my desktop. I'm going to save this into test one um, folder, and then I'm going to save it in the build folder, and I'm just going to call this uh, build um, build.pde. Okay. So, uh, let me just move this to the side, and let me just show you. Um, my folder structure here. So we've got test one, we've got build, we've got build.pde. So now at this point, um, you can actually come to tools and you can click uh, build. And if I click build, what it will do is actually run 
processing Java, and you'll notice that I'm viewing the vi visual results just like I did in the processing IDE. Okay. Now, there's a couple of things that you should uh, be aware of. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and, 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 and quit this. One is, Josh, why do you do this as test one, build, build PDE? Because if I want to make a bunch of mutations of test one, all I have to do is drag and copy, drag and copy, drag and copy, drag and copy, right? So now I've got five tests of maybe this initial, initial sketch that I have developed. Um, but instead of, uh, how do I put this? Because the sketch name has to be the same thing as the folder name, if I did this kind of copy and duplication, I would have to go and rename the PDE file, test1.pde, test2.pde. Again, shaving minutes off my life, man. Uh, I, you know, I, I would much rather um, have this kind of nesting, so that way I've got test1, inside of test1 is build, and inside of build is build.pde, so I never have to rename build.pde. So I can duplicate that initial sketch and not worry about having to rename my PDE every single time I make a new mutation. That's just me, and I'm crazy. Now, <laughs> this class is going to be fun. Fun class. Another thing that you should notice is that something that happens in... Um, Sublime Text 2 that doesn't happen in Processing IDE. And that's this build-temp directory. So every time I build a file, it's going to build this build.temp directory. Okay, And in, the, in a little bit here, I'm going to show you some, uh, uh, some shortcuts for how to just delete those files so that um, you're not accumulating all these build.temp files. Unfortunately, Sublime Text 2 is always going to generate that build.temp file, and there's no way to turn it off inside of Sublime Text 2. Um, again, processing IDE doesn't do that. The processing IDE uh, has no reason to create this uh, build.temp file, where Sublime Text 2 does. Okay? So, uh, we now have processing downloaded, we have Sublime Text 2 downloaded, we have the bundle installed, we um, uh, are learning about shortcuts inside of Sublime Text 2, we opened up processing and we installed processing Java. In the next video, I'm going to show you some further steps inside of Sublime Text 2, as well as some um, sort of essential apps that I use only on OS X, and we'll talk about uh, why and um, how these are helpful. See you in the third video.